Hello VC. So it's another sunny summer day here in Franconia, Germany. And it's a bit early, but I thought I'd start earlier than usual because uh, the sun will come out and it's gonna get hot in this room. So, um, just a couple of records I have listened to in the last two days. So the first album I want to show is Ars Longa Vita Brevis by The Nice. Now this was the second album by The Nice that came out in 1969 and uh, it's a bit of a transition album because The Nice started out as a four-piece with the guitarist David O'List and uh, this is the album when he was leaving. Though, in parts, uh, you can hear him on the record and uh, in other parts this is already a rehearsal for the three-piece concept that uh, Keith Emerson um, had also followed after the nice with Emerson, Lake and Palmer. This is the back side of the album. And uh, it comes in a, at least this edition I have here, comes in a nice white vinyl. I can show you here. I haven't listened to it for quite a while. And I must say, here's the thing, when I was a kid I was totally crazy about ELP. So I really bought into all this seriousness and flamboyance and uh, this sort of an epic artistic journey. But in hindsight, even though I really still appreciate Emerson, Lake and Palmer, um, well, they, they somehow failed to deliver the perfect album, I think. Uh, an album that uh, could uh, cope with this uh, level of fame and, 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 and indulgence that the band projected. Doesn't matter, I mean, they still done some amazing albums. But the thing is, even though when I was young I, I, I didn't pay that much attention to the Nice, I respected the Nice because they were sort of the predecessor to LP, but um, now I find it quite enjoyable because what's the, what's, what's the nice thing about the Nice is that they kind of didn't give a shit. So this is not a band that is trying to deliver the perfect album or, or uh, they just want to go crazy. They are highly capable to, to play intriguing music. At the same time, they are almost like kids. And there are all these strange infantile <laughs> lyrics on the album and it's quite naughty in, in, in parts. So um, there's a lightness to it that suddenly I find very charming and, um, and very intriguing. And this kind of lightness you never, you never experience in ELP where everything was sort of serious and uh, you know, uh, focused on the art. And, and um, yeah, the nights were a little bit different. They were kind of more fun and that is something I can appreciate now. I don't know if this made any sense to you. I'm just kind of rambling. Um, the other album I listened to just yesterday is Primitive Man by Ice House. Ice House, of course, was a famous Australian band and this is uh, their debut album. And it came out in 1982. And I remember it actually really well. This is a pressing I... Actually my father bought, I think. I inherited that one. Um, when it came out, it's the back side. Um, this nice inner sleeve here. <laughs> and uh, now this is really an exciting album. Um, I haven't heard it for quite a while. This came out on Chrysalis. You can see here, well, Chrysalis is of course the label that became rich and famous because of Jethro Tull, uh, which they probably would never have admitted in exactly that words. Um, and uh, this is a great album, that's all I can say. I mean, they kind of, they kind of, uh, 
they kind of arranged the songs on the album sort of uh, the best first and the not so good little later. So once you start it on the on the side A, it's actually unbelievable because it's one one amazing song after the other. So um, this is really a um, a great uh, example of uh, well functioning uh, rock and pop music. So if you don't know it, give it a try. Well, this is something completely different. I have listened to those two 12 inches. One is here and very similarly looking. One is here. And those are the two 12 inches um, that uh, Ryuichi Sakamoto released on the Ninja Tunes. Or um, you can look at it the other way. Ninja Tunes hired some well-known DJs to remix stuff by Ryuichi Sakamoto. Now these uh, these two are called Prayer Salvation and uh, Anger Grief. Now these two 12 inches are remixing the four tracks on this album, which is Discord by Ryuichi Sakamoto. Um, and uh, it really looks that shiny mirror-like. <laughs> Um, it's a, it's an interesting album, as um, as you would probably agree. Sakamoto's music is very, very versatile, yet almost exclusively on the light side of uh, of sound. Um, this is the one exception where he sort of explores um, darker tunes, and uh, it's one of the rare moments where there's musically speaking, sort of an angry Ryuichi Sakamoto. Um, so uh, this has been picked up by Ninja Tunes and they created these two 12 inches. It's very interesting. I mean, it's a, in parts it's a very, uh, it's a very uh, gloomy, uh, gloomy form of uh, down-tempo drum and bass music. Um, the names range from Ashley Beadle and uh, Talvin Singh Eamon Tobin. Interesting. Yeah, and then I kind of was in a mood for uh, Brazilian music, which uh, is not such a rare event. So I started uh, to an album from the 80s, which is uh, Bam Bam by Gal Costa. Now she's of course one of the great, uh, the grand ladies of, uh, of Brazilian music with a career spanning over decades um, and uh, this is of course a very nice cover by the way because it's a gatefold and actually if you open it you get the whole picture oh no the other way around <laughs> so uh, I don't know if I can even get that far can you see it That's a nice cover, highly collectible. So it's, it has an inside. Now this is Gal Costa in the 80s. And uh, um, I wouldn't say that it doesn't sound like the 80s. I mean, the, the Brazilian pop music has uh, always uh, reflected uh, the, the musical zeitgeist around them. It's not something that stands stuck in, the, in this sort of a bossa nova sound of the 60s. So there are also all kind of a uh, little more rock driven uh, tracks on it. So here's the RCA label in orange. But I must say I basically like everything by Gal Costa. Quite regardless if she recorded that in the 60s, 70s or 80s. Now, uh, Gal Costa is one of these examples of uh, um, Brazilian artists that suddenly came quite in demand in the late 90s when uh, the whole new jazz and Latin house scene um, became vibrant and, and exciting and all the remixing started. So uh, on that note, let's see the next album, which is uh, Tanto Tempo 
by Bebe Gilberto. And uh, she's of course the daughter of uh, Joao Gilberto. You see her trying to sound Brazilian Portuguese here, which is a ridiculous effort. I apologize to everyone who is from that area. <laughs> this is a wonderful album, by the way. Um, it's It comes actually as a double album or as a two to 12 inches. Um, with a white label and a kind of a brownish label. Yeah, that's some wonderful music. It's it's uh, it's on a nice, uh, interesting uh, border between uh, acoustic uh, bossa nova music and uh, sort of a club uh, new jazz uh, sounding music. Yeah, another good example of this uh, sort of revival of Brazilian music in the late 90s would be, of course, Salome de Bahia. Um, theme of Rio is a uh, 12-inch that uh, was uh, produced, of course, by Bob Sinclair, who is one of these DJs slash musicians who were quite instrumental in uh, introducing uh, Brazilian music to the clubhouse and dance scene in Europe and America. And this album is also really nice. Well, this is a pure sort of a DJing product. The Brazilian Studies L, Parte Um, by Damiano da Silva. Those are some really good danceable tunes on the tunes, rhythms. That's quite fitting with the weather right now. So that's it for the moment and uh, stay tuned. Bye bye.